I'll be honest, this is something that I always say I will do and often forget to do. So now <laughs> that's taken care of. Um, <laughs> so thanks everyone for joining us. Very good, a couple more folks joining. And I'll share this again in the chat as people are um, joining us if you want to introduce yourselves. One other thing that I'm going to um, share in the chat for folks as you're joining, I did send an email to everyone who had registered for the session with um, some coloring pages that Natalie put together for us to participate in creatively as we're going through um, her session today. But I'll um, post a link to that here too. Um, if you'd like to download um, that file and print that out and get your um, colored markers and pens and <laughs> color pencils and crayons ready to go so that you can do some creative processing as we go through the program today. Um, I think if it's okay with you, Natalie, I think I'm going to go ahead and kind of kick us off and get yeah. things started. Today. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, it's so nice to see, as I said, so many familiar faces and then also some folks who uh, have just started joining us for perhaps this series of the um, virtual conversations for leadership educators. My name is Abby Prince. I'm the Director of Program Quality and Management at Leadershape. Um, and I'm super excited for the seventh and final, so far at least, um, final series of virtual conversations that we're providing to leadership educators. We've had over 2,300 people join us or register at least for the programs to engage in the first six series that we've had so far. And so we're excited to come back this week for another series on virtual conversations. The purpose of this time together is to share questions and thoughts and best practices as we continue to reimagine how this happens, how leadership education happens, and how we struggle with um, perhaps some virtual platforms. I think at this point in pandemic, most folks are familiar with Zoom, um, but if you'd like to, or if you're new still to Zoom or struggling with technology, you're not alone. Um, if you wanna use that chat feature to post comments and questions there, you're also very, very welcome to turn your cameras on and unmute yourself for questions as we engage um, in conversation with Natalie for this hour. Um, and then if you have a private question that you wanted to send to either Natalie or I, you could do that by changing where that drop down where it says everyone change it to one of our names so that you can ask us a question there as well. When folks gather together in community, we, we like to acknowledge the land that we are all from. So I will um, share with you Leadership's land acknowledgement in beginning this presentation by acknowledging that the land each of us is on today is the original homelands of indigenous and tribal nations. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from these territories. And we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous people still connected to this land. Please honor and acknowledge the native and indigenous indigenous peoples from the land that you're joining us from and give thought to your ancestry and the generations that came before you. I'm joining you from central Illinois here in Piatt County, which is the original lands of Potawatomi and Kickapoo um, nations. And so I'm glad to be joining you all from that land here today. And I hope that you give thought to where you're joining from as well. I'd like to share um, a definition of leadership, our first our mission, mission and vision statement of the, our organization and in creating a just, caring and thriving world where I'll lead with integrity and a healthy disregard for the impossible, which is one of my all time favorite phrases. And then in thinking about leadership's definition of leadership, we know that there are lots of definitions of leadership, but we believe that leadership involves living in a state of possibility, making a commitment to a vision, developing relationships to move that vision into action and sustaining a high level of integrity. Effective leadership takes place in the context of a community and results in a more equitable society. And I think that we find joy in that. I am so glad to be joined today by a beloved member of the leadership community, Natalie Killer Periano, or Nat KP, as we like to call her, um, to assist in the facilitation of this conversation. Natalie's full bio is listed in the Zoom meeting invite um, that you all read about when you first signed up for the session. But I would love for Natalie, if you'd like to just give an introduction to yourself and say hello to folks before I turn things over to you. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Abby, for the introduction. Um, I am so excited to spend this time with you today. This is one of my absolute favorite conversations to have. So my name is Natalie, um, or you can call me Nat or Nat KP. I am a lettering artist in Columbus, Ohio. I've been doing lettering art for about nine years, and I honestly started it when I was working in higher education. Um, my most recent role was a very fancy title, the Dean of Co-Curricular Design. Um, and I started lettering as a mindfulness activity, sort of a way to unwind at the end of the night and to kind of connect with my creative side and um, things that brought me joy. So I'm hoping that today this can be a nice creative break for everyone and also a very thoughtful and engaging conversation about um, joy and in particular, how do we put ourselves on the path of joy more often? So um, this is just a great conversation to have and I, I hope that you enjoy it. Um, I have been making art and studying um, the concept of joy and justice and their interactions since I decided to make um, art my full-time job, so for about four and a half years. And um, there are there are so many ways that these things um, are have interplayed together, and um, I am hopeful that some of your thoughtful answers and experiences will help to enlighten us about those things as well. Um, I know Abby said, but I live for the actual conversation part of this, and I want this to feel very natural. So, do feel free to unmute yourself um, to jump into the conversation, or of course, we'll be in that chat too, hanging out and, and monitoring what's going on in there. So thanks again for having me. Yeah, that sounds good. And from one um, spectacular job title to another, the sprinkler of positivity confetti at Natterdoodle is the title of the century. So I'm so glad that that is your title. It brings me joy every time I read that, if I'm being honest. So um, Natalie, I'll just turn things over to you as you kick things off towards finding joy in times of uncertainty. Great. Thank you, Abby. Well, friends, again, I'm, I'm very lucky. I feel very grateful to spend this time with you today. And um, it's really nice to see so many familiar names and um, and campuses where I have done virtual programs this year. I mean, we all, man, did we pivot, right? So I keep saying we pivoted so much. We were, I felt like I was wearing toe shoes, right? So it's so nice to see so many campuses um, that I've worked with previously and co-leads who I've gotten to work with also. So what a joy already to see those names. Um, today, we're gonna be having this great conversation. And I want to um, remind you that we do have coloring pages. I think one of the most fun things to do when having a conversation um, and a way that a lot of experiential learners learn is by keeping your hands busy so your ears and your heart and your mind can be open. So do feel free to color along with me. I'm actually gonna be coloring on my tablet as we talk to, I'm coloring some, I drew this from my cousins to color. So I'll be coloring along with y'all too. We are gonna have this long conversation about joy, but I also wanna acknowledge that we can't always be in a, a joyful fervor at all times. So um, I wanna acknowledge that there's other feelings that we are probably experiencing um, in our lives right now. So I'd love to just start with a quick check-in about one thing we're grateful for right now, and then maybe one thing that's feeling unsettled in our hearts or something that is making us feel stressed. I will go ahead and start and please feel free to share in the chat as well. So um, one thing that I'm really grateful for right now, I'm actually, in Cleveland for a week, which is my hometown, I'm visiting all of my friends and family up here because I'm double vaccinated and so are they. And so this is the first time I've seen most, actually all of them in a year and a half. And it feels like a energizing refresh. I can't even explain to you how lovely it is to sit in my cousin's home right now. So what a treat. One thing that's feeling unsettled for me is I own a store and the new CDC guidelines have come out and mm -hmm. I'm not I'm just kind of in a place of like what does this mean for the store and will we be doing masks still and you know I'm just I'm just trying to feel out what this new normal is um and wondering if there if normal is a feeling that I can expect to even happen in the near future for me right so that's kind of where I'm at right now and I'm seeing Kara saying um she's really grateful for laughter and for fall semester uh, grateful for dogs, yes. Uh, 
so grateful for dogs. <laughs> um, and unsettled with recent relocation and unknowns. Yes, relocating certainly comes with a big chunk of that. I understand that, Andy. Grateful for your health, Jenny. Yes, I'm grateful for your health too. Um, worried about future job losses in higher ed. Yes, it's been a really, it's been a really hard year. Yeah, and seeing a lot of on it, a freeze for rehiring too has been challenging. I hear that, Jenny. Thank you for sharing. Um, gratitude is uh -oh. a oh, Sorry, oh bad. no, a rivalry. Mm. <laughs> Listen, though, Sarah, I'll say this. I always root for Pittsburgh if they're not playing Cleveland because, you know, Steel Towns, we get it, right? Like, we're just all very gritty fans. So it's a rivalry, yes, but I'm always rooting for you when you're not here in Cleveland playing me. <laughs> um, reintegration and travel tomorrow. Yeah, it's definitely mm -hmm. unsettling. Mm -hmm. Grateful for vaccinations. Unsettled Congress. Burden. Will we ever feel settled about Congress? No, we very won't. Good question. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, new opportunities and worried about upcoming hecticness with fall semester, work and personal mm -hmm. life. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, grateful for a job that you love. Unsettled about how busy you are. Oh, today has already been. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Caitlin, I hear that. And I'm glad that you're giving yourself the gift of an hour to hopefully get a little more energy going into the second half of your day. Yeah. Andy, good to see you here. Successfully made it through the last year. I'm stuck about the unknowns of fall semester. Right. Every school I've recently is, I'm like, so what's happening in the fall? And every campus professional is just doing a, a shrug on Zoom. And I'm like, I hear that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Grateful for upcoming travel. I'm excited about navigating the summer schedule with the kiddos. Yes, Julie. Hi, Julie. Um, grateful to visit your parents, Martha, and your siblings. I'm grateful that you got back too. Concerned about your dad's health. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's so real, right? That's, yeah. We've been, we've been, um, that's come more to the, the top of the surface than ever this, this past year and a half. And mm -hmm. um, I am sending um, love and positive feelings to you and your family as you navigate that. Thank you for sharing that. Abby, did you want to share? How yeah, I was thinking um, as I was reading Julie's, I feel like she summed up a big part for me, which was I feel so grateful and excited for upcoming travel. And I feel so unsettled about upcoming travel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I'm really excited about it, but I worry that once I get towards it and think about, like, oh, am I okay with this? And I'm not sure. And how does that feel? And yeah, yeah. but cheers to vaccinations for sure. Cheers to vaccination. I will say this, um, only travel I've done, I drove to Florida to visit my grandfather, but I flew back. Yeah. And I will say I felt safer on the flight home than I did on my whole trip. So oh. I think the travel, because everybody has to wear masks and everything there. So the actual, that stuff, I think it tends to work out okay. okay. And then when you're where you are, it's the same as you are when you're at home, which is like, why does, why aren't they wearing it over their nose and question mark about, should I be wearing it outside? Right. So all that stuff remains. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Well, thank you all so much for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Um, I know our focus will be today on joy, but joy is so related to all of our other emotions that it's really important that we, we check in on the other ways that we might be feeling as well. So thank you so much. And now I'd love to just start the conversation about joy with, you know, what does joy mean for us? How do we define joy? So what do you think joy means? If you had to describe joy to someone, what would be some words you would use? What would be some pictures you might paint? Hmm. And I'll start with a few things that come, just come to mind for me right away when I, it feels, yes, it definitely feels good, Kelsey. Kittens, Jenny, yes, <laughs> yes. A lightness, absolutely. A certain feeling of lightness, of effervescence, right? Mm -hmm. Smiling, definitely a physical response when you're feeling joy. Refreshing, yes, I agree. I like that. Yeah, I feel, um, I also feel lighter. I feel um, like I'm very present when I'm experiencing joy, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, infectious, yes, absolutely. Actually, um, studies have shown that joy is one of the top two most kind of contagious emotions. 
that you can spread it the most, which I think it's is really. Yeah. It's so great to talk about some a positive contagion. Yeah, right. <laughs> so much about other yeah. contagion. So. Hand washing not required to, to spread no. it, you know, right? Yeah, absolutely. I love that too. I've always thought of joy as kind of like the the wiser, older cousin of happy. Mm. Like there's a Ooh. little more a more depth and permanence perhaps to joy than just like a moment or Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like where you're going with that. Cause we're going to talk about how joy and happiness are related to mm -hmm. passion, contentment, upliftment, calm surroundings. Yes. Peacefulness. Absolutely. Yeah. So joy, most of what we're describing when, when folks are, are giving their response to this are, um, how you feel, right? The feelings associated with it, mm -hmm. lightness, refreshing, um, contagious, content, all these things. And then some are physical responses, smiles. Um, and some are also just things that bring us joy, like kittens, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these are all things I can agree with and how joy can make us feel. I love this question. So let's transition now from what does joy mean to how joy is actually defined and then how is it different from happiness? So what is joy specifically? So joy is an intense momentary emotion. It's an emotion that you feel really big physically. It's kind of when you feel um, like so excited, you want to jump up and down or you're laughing so hard that your belly starts to hurt, right? Or um, that you feel so connected that you start to get like goose pimples on your arm, right? It's this really intense magnified emotion, but it's not something that can withstand constantly. Like I can't always be walking around with goosebumps, right? It's just not, you can't maintain that physical feeling all the time or that emotion, but it is so big that it's very visceral feeling and it kind of takes over um, our heart, our mind and our body when we're feeling it. So I always think of, if you've ever seen the movie um, Love Actually, the beginning and the end of Love Actually is my favorite. It's actually not really part of the, the film as much as it is like sort of when the credits are coming. And it's when everyone, there's just strangers are at the airport, people that aren't even in the movie, reuniting at the airport, people waiting for their loved ones to get off the plane or being reunited in some way. And the hugs that are so intense, right? And the like jumping up and down and the smiles and the kids with their little signs. It's that, that big, big feeling of, oh yeah, like that feeling, right? And so it is so intense. It is, I know I love that movie too. <laughs> and I love those scenes too, Jenny. I could watch that more than I could watch the actual middle part of the movie over and over again. And I think especially during the pandemic, it's given me um, jolts of joy when I was watching it near the holidays. Yeah, so it's this intense momentary emotion that's really big and you feel it physically, but because it feels big, but it is short, a lot of people sort of ignore it because it feels like it's not that important because it's such a short-lived feeling, but actually it's really important and it's such a bucket filler. Um, and it's also just, it's really good for stress relief and for our actual physical and emotional health. So I hope that we can get into some of those specifics um, now that we're starting to understand more what joy actually means. So if joy is this intense momentary experience and emotion, how might then we think joy would be different from happiness or joy might be different from delight? So I liked what Abby was saying where she was saying, okay, I, I feel like these things are related and maybe joy is like the wiser cousin, the longer term thing. Mm -hmm. um, but now that we know that joy is actually these like um, bite-sized moments, mm -hmm. like big feeling, right? If that's what joy is, then what might happiness be? Well, you've changed my thinking a lot. I know, I know, but you were in a very good path. Maybe just words were in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, what was that? What's that game that you plug in the words? Mm. I mean, Mad Libs, Mad Libs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can string these all together, right? Like oh, yeah. if, we, if we have delight and happiness and joy in our bucket, we're already in better We're in a good place. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Good for us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so joy 
bite-sized big feelings, right? And Andy's saying happiness might be a baseline constant. Yes. So joy is this bite-sized big emotion feeling um, where happiness is actually more of a state of being. And Confetti agrees with me. My dog really <laughs> agrees. Um, <laughs> yeah. So happiness is a state of being and it is a longer term state of being. In American culture, we are often pretty focused on happiness. It's a word that we make a lot of wood signs about and sell at like Hobby Lobby, right? And it's a, also a word that's like in our doctrine, right? Like the pursuit of happiness. Um, oftentimes we're so focused on pursuing happiness and getting to happiness um, kind of as a goal setting measure, right? Uh, like, oh, I'll be happy when is a sentence we say a lot. Well, I'll be happy when the semester is over. I'll be happy when I lose three pounds. I'll be happy when I find a loving partner. I'll be happy when we're always kind of in a state of planning mm -hmm. to be happier than we are right now. But sometimes we're so busy in the planning process when we get to the thing that we're convinced is going to make us happy, we forget to fully experience it because we get to a place of, okay, now I'll be even happier when. I'll be even happier when I lose not just three pounds, but five pounds. I'll be even happier when my partner and I move in together, right? So happiness is this longer term state of being that we can get to, we can achieve, and we can fill, fulfill, but also can feel a little intimidating. So it is an example. Over the pandemic, when I was really, really isolated, I have a lot of autoimmune issues. So I was like very vigilant the whole time. It was very hard for me to feel like I could have a month of a happy state of being when I couldn't see my people. It was really hard, right? I know we've all, we all have some version of this story, right? But because joy is small and it's fairly accessible. So even though I couldn't feel like in a constant state of happiness, I knew I could get these bite-sized moments of joy that were, could sustain me into the next mm -hmm. day. Right? Even if it was something little like, you know, a really good walk with my dog or a bite of Jenny's ice cream, like the first bite of Jenny's ice cream, oh. I love Jenny's ice cream so much. So okay. happiness is big and it might feel sometimes hard to come by because it's a, it really just kind of takes a lot of effort, but joy, it's almost effortless when you start to notice the things that kind of universally bring us joy. Um, you end up kind of stumbling over joy more, more often. And that's why I'm obsessed with joy because we can really kind of tap into it whenever we want, once we start to know some of those inherent qualities of joy. And so that's what I'm hoping we can discover yeah. a little bit more of today. Natalie, I don't know if you see my four legs of joy just jumped up onto my lap. I saw a little um, lap buddy. Yes. <laughs> here for the conversation on joy. <laughs> And almost nothing brings me more joy than my dog. So mm -hmm. I, I feel, I feel that in a big way, Abby, I very much relate. Yes. Well, then let's start talking about what brings us joy. Okay. When you think of joy for you, what first comes to mind? What first comes to mind? Some of these things um, that we heard before, like kittens, right? What are some of those things? Dogs for Abby and me, for sure. Oh, I love that your dog's ears poked, poked up when I said kittens, like kitten. <laughs> <laughs> your English Mastiff. Yes. Exactly. Niece and nephew. Yes. Yeah. My nephews for me, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Family. Mm -hmm. Truly. Yes. Family. Definitely. Palomas. Michelle. Yes. With the second answer. Yes. As well. Love a Paloma. <laughs> love a good margarita. Yes. Mm -hmm. Family. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Both my family and like my chosen friend family, right? Like the yes, people. Who get yes, connected. Important. Yeah. So important. Absolutely. Yeah. These are all great examples. Dog, family, close friends. Yes. All of these fit so neatly into some of the qualities of joy, um, specifically nieces and nephews, kids, family. This all fits into one of the qualities of joy that we're going to talk about play right? Where you can feel at ease with people and you can really just goof around a little bit, right? And just kind of be in your natural state. Absolutely. 
And dogs and animals of all kinds also fit into play, right? Because if kids and animals have their hierarchy of need met, if they've got a safe home and a loving environment and food, mm -hmm. right? They're really, their motivation is just play, right? Yeah. And what's more joyful than that? Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Okay, time with your nieces, a great blue heron flying over. Oh, it carries special meaning for you. That's so cool. Martha, I had one on my um, roof last week and my neighbor texted me, there's a pelican on your roof. <laughs> <laughs> a pelican. <laughs> and I said, oh, we live in Ohio. <laughs> a blue heron but um yes thank you it is it's a delight to have the bird visit but it, it is indeed not a pelican um yes these are all great examples yes an animal that carries special meaning for you pelican on a roof it would be it would also be worrisome like ma'am sir or ma'am pelican you may be in the wrong place right <laughs> Absolutely. You need to keep heading south yes keep heading south yes yeah, these are things that definitely come to mind. Family, animals, um, time spent with close friends. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are all great examples. So let's now transition to a memory. What's our most recent joyful memory? Give me a moment that you've had recently where you know you felt that kind of kismity, you know, tingly feeling, right? Like goosebumps or laugh such infectious laughter or just so 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 connected to someone that it was like um, palpable what's a recent joyful memory for you I have one oh yeah I'd have... love to hear it yeah so yeah. I um my two nephews who are a great source of joy for me they have been reaching out to me for help with their homework um, like to review papers. And one of them had a poem they needed to memorize this week. And so he reached out to me because I, I don't know if you know, I have a degree in poetry. And so anytime I get to use that, I'm super excited about it. And so um, helping him do that and like seeing him succeed in it, it just felt like such a joyful moment to celebrate. Oh, that's a great one. Yes. Yeah. Vernon said his birthday celebration for a good friend. Yeah. I mean, just Absolutely. the just getting to have celebrations in person again is so huge, right? Yeah. yeah. Big or small. I mean, whatever it takes, right? Seeing your students graduate. Yes. Nieces excel in school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Virtual learning has been so hard on so many. Oh, the skate park. For Julie. Oh, Julie. Yes. Oh, skating awesome. and the skate park. Oh, that's really fun. Uh -huh. Oh, you met your niece for the first oh. time, Andy. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Oh, that is, yeah, that's an amazing feeling. That's so exciting. Oh, you had a friend visit Caitlin. Yes. Oh God, these reunions. I can't get enough of them. Selling your best, your best friend's twins first birthday this past oh. weekend. Oh, how charming. And talking with your nephew, your dog wanting to play fetch again. Oh, Andy. Yes. Oh God. Yes. Is it too much to say that reading this list is a recent joyful moment? Because oh, it feels so. Because again, joy oh, is one yeah. of the most contagious emotions, right? So like, yeah. and we can relate to so many of these that it's just easy to be like, oh, I know that feeling. I know that yep. feeling, sat in that feeling. Returning to your soulmate after days oh. away. Oh, I love the word soulmate. Watching a hilarious YouTube video. Uh, yes. <laughs> Sometimes we need to just break up the day that way, right? Uh -huh. I mean, we get hired as an RN. Yes. Yeah, these are these are awesome. Yeah, yeah. Love I love these. I actually this morning my um, cousin owns a salon, and I got to just for the first time in so long sit in her chair, and she got to do my hair and just like connect with her, and it was just such a warm feeling. I just kept saying like, if I feel like I haven't had. Like I'm feeling every touch to my head right now in a way that I never had before with a haircut, but it just felt like, oh, such a, such a special feeling. Wow. Yeah. These are great. These are great memories. And I love that so many of them touch on other qualities of joy. Um, Vernon specifically and Kelsey um, talked about celebrations and celebration is one of the qualities of joy that was really felt more challenging during the height of the pandemic yeah. right? because the way that we typically celebrate milestones is around food and gathering together and these are things that just were not as easy right for us um but now and we did a lot of it I mean I had a lot of creative zoom birthdays that were a delight but maybe didn't feel the way I wanted them to in person, right? Um, but now we're getting more back into the group. But celebration is one of those qualities of joy, those moments that we can come together and, um, you know, 
mark a special time or an achievement is, is a great one. Animals, again, are always a huge one. Laughter, um, reconnecting, these are great. And um, sharing time outside, like walking, fetching, playing, skating. Another quality of joy is freedom. And freedom is really just associated with time spent outdoors, right? Mm -hmm. Open air, green spaces, or doing something active. Um, can give us that feeling of freedom as well. Okay, so we've talked about our recent joyful memory. I want us to reach back now. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. I want to talk about little you. Remember little you? <laughs> what was a moment of joy that tiny you experienced? What's a far back memory of joy for you? When you were a kid, were there special occasions or holidays or um, time spent with someone special in your life? Or was there a game, right? That really just had you like ear to ear smiling. Yeah, gave you that feeling of pure, pure kiddo joy. Oh, Think back for me. I love this question. Ooh, popsicles. Yeah, summer popsicles. Yeah. The ice cream truck ding is one I hear a lot too. Yeah, just like the, the song playing and everyone running outside to get their cone or their popsicle. Jumping on a trampoline, yes. That movement and play, that sounds like, right? I love Absolutely. That. Back to the pool. Mm -hmm. Yes, the first back to the pool, like Memorial Day time normally, right? When you're back at the pool. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, okay, fishing, sledding, dance recitals, yes. Yeah. Saturday morning cartoons. Can you believe it's not a thing anymore? Such a lost art. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Saturday morning cartoons. These are so good. That's so great. Yeah, I love these. Yeah, for me, outside time was huge. Oh, playing high tea with your grandma. Yes. Yeah. What a fun memory. That's I a love really that. fun memory. Yeah. That's so cute. I used to play blackjack jack with my grandma for pennies. And um, that was a big moment. Land of the Lost. <laughs> Women, yes. Yes, that was, a good, that was a very good show. Yes, these are great. I love these answers because um, the older we get typically, uh, the cooler we feel the need to be, right? Mm -hmm. And um, there's some amount of loss that we experience around kind of childhood whimsy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, and some of that's just nostalgia that we feel about these things, like trips that we took. Of course, we might feel the same way fishing in the Mississippi River now that we did as kids. But the things that we don't let ourselves do now as much, like sledding, right? I don't, I, I have not sled on a sled since the 90s, I'm yeah. sure, right? <laughs> um, or jumped on a trampoline, right? So some of these things just don't, aren't part of our routine anymore. And part of it's because we quote unquote outgrew them. But I'm sure if my old boned arthritis allowed me, I would enjoy sledding <laughs> as much as I did as exactly. a kid, right? So are there things that you did as a kid that brought you joy that you still do now, that you still have, you've carried through, whether they're too childlike or not, right? Are, are there any of those things that you still carry through? You know, I was thinking, Natalie, with that first question about the furthest back memory. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I think of so often is I was probably in the first grade and our mother served us dessert first and then <gasps> we had dinner later. So there's just like a little cookie with a chocolate chip cookie on it, a little plate with that cookie on it. And my sister and I were both like, oh, like it just felt so exciting and joyful. Yes. Like mom just totally indulged us. And I just made those same chocolate chip cookies earlier this week. And I thought about that moment. I thought yeah. sometimes dessert first, you know, so good. <laughs> and the element there, like, um, not only just like the care and love that your mom put into that, but also the element of surprise. That yeah, the, the one of the of it felt so yeah. creative. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like That's breaking the rules and totally. Yeah. I love that. Martha, yes, you still love reading, right? So finding mm -hmm. the right book as a kid and the right book as an adult, absolutely. A freshly baked fruitcake ready at Thanksgiving. Oh, I don't think I've ever even had fruitcake. I haven't either. Oh, well now, Abby, you cook and you bake. Yeah, I'll get on that. Right. Going back to the pool. Yeah, absolutely. If the, the pool is something we did as kids and that 
we still do as adults. Yeah. Swimming with, with the kids makes it so fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Handstand contests, right. Throwing pennies to the bottom of the pool and fetching them out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Reading the summer. summer. <sighs> yeah. That summer reading list that we always started to tackle as kids, right? Like yes. get that summer reading list ready. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I love this answer about the first rain and the first snowfall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not as joyful when you're shoveling it. That's right. Andy. <laughs> but um, another quality of joy is this idea of um, transitions and renewal. Mm -hmm. so like when the seasons change is a big time of a renewal for us right um or things that only happen once a year um so summer berry picking right things like that um that you only really get to do during certain times of the year can give you that feeling of renewal and refresh in your environment yeah these are great these are great answers okay so we've talked about things that have recently brought us joy we've talked about things that we can tap into from childhood that have brought us joy now let's talk a little bit about what's happening right now, <laughs> right? When a lot of us are at the end of the year, I am no longer in higher ed, but I remember April and May very well. <laughs> and um, I remember the stress of just the word April coming up on my calendar, like, wow, dun, 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 dun. like, okay, <laughs> right? So let's talk a little bit about how it feels when we're stressed. When we're stressed, what do we turn to for comfort, right? Is it like a comfort food? Mm -hmm. Uh, Is it a walk? Is it a FaceTime with, you know, a friend? What are are our go-tos when we're in a stress state and we're trying to reach for something to help us cope? What do we do? What brings us comfort? Hammocking and meditating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love that. Oh my God, for a minute, Andy, I read that as wine with my dog. And I was like, yes, happy hour with a dog. Here's that, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Sleep, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. right? Frozen margarita. Yeah, I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it lukewarm at this point. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes, so good. Okay. Yeah, time outside, sunshine, being outside with friends. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Exercise, spending time or talking with friends. A trip to family, but we're finding a show to binge on. Yes. Yes, Kelsey. Here's a question. When we turn to binging a show or a movie or something, when we're in stress, do we normally go for an old favorite or something totally new? I'd love to hear what people say about this. If you're going to binge a show because you're stressed and you want something, do you go for something that is an old favorite that you've seen before or do you go for something totally new always an old favorite <laughs> old favorite okay golden girl so definitely an old favorite yeah yeah, yeah. so okay something new but funny yeah kelsey okay good so um a study came out last summer that uh, talked specifically about this which i love because um it just very connected to this idea of joy and Um, what we turn to when we're stressed. And most people tend to go for something familiar, something they already know. And the reasons were um, it's familiar. So they know the ending. So they don't have to be stressed about what's going to happen. There's no suspense, right? In that way. Also, um, the characters feel familiar, kind of like friends, you know, when you've watched so so many times. For me, this is um, Parks and Rec. I feel like Leslie Nope and I are, you know, besties. And so I just feel like I get it. Leslie's high strung, but it's all going to work out at the end of this episode. So I'm okay. Right. Um, and the other reason being that uh, you also don't have to be fully paying attention. Right. So you can kind of decompress. Now, another interesting part of that study showed that a lot of people um, tend to turn to crime dramas, which was a very unexpected outcome of this uh, study because most people consider crime to be stressful, Um, but actually crime dramas are very formulaic, right? Like if you're watching Law and Order, it's like, dun dun, huge problem. Dun dun, Olivia Benson is on the case. Dun dun, Olivia Benson gets the bad person. Dun dun, it's all adjudicated in under an hour and everybody is served, right? Like normally there's like a really easy wrap up somehow, which we know is not real, Um, but 
a lot of people tend to turn to those things. So we typically go to these kind of old favorites because they give us that sense of comfort, that sense of connection um, that we're looking for when we are stressed out. So what's, I'm gonna make a case for joy right now in terms of times of stress, because I know when I used to be um, the Dean at Denison, if I had a big deadline, um, I would do this to myself. I would sit down and say, you can't move from that chair until you finish this thing. I don't care if you have to go to the bathroom or eat or drink, but you can't even look up until you finish this report. Strongly uh, disagree with myself now because actually these are the times where we need joy the most. The times where we are most stressed are the times where we need to be making intentional time for joy. Even just quick breaks like a little walk or going to get yourself a fancy coffee or whatever it might be, because joy actually counteracts our physical effects of stress. Small moments of joy can bring down our elevated heart rate, can bring down our elevated blood pressure. When we're stressed, we often think, I don't have time for fun or anything like that right now. But actually, we aren't able to focus as well if we're not taking breaks. And we, it's even better for us when they are intentionally joyful. Studies have shown that Joy improves our emotional resilience as well. So rather than just a coping mechanism to fill in a coping mechanism, be thinking about what can I do that would give me just that little jolt of smile for a moment, right? Um, and so, and, and also joy can make us up to 14% more productive immediately following that moment. So if you need a case for, I can't get this report done, um, but I can't take a break. No, you will probably get your report done 14% faster if you take a, a 10 minute break, right? So that's also a good, a good excuse to take a walk or a drive or get an ice cream cone or whatever it might be. That's a great thing to keep in mind. I love right? that. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So this next question is one that I think has come up for, oh, yes. This is, I love this polling question. Here we go, let's do this. Okay. This literally my favorite question in the world to ask. And it is silly when you first look at it, okay? While on a walk, you are set to encounter some ducks. On this walk, would you rather see duck, ducks, or oodles of ducks? Meaning one duck, two ducks, or so many ducks, uncountable ducks, okay? So one duck, two ducks, or just so many ducks? And we're coming in hot on this poll. Yeah, okay. 100% of people have responded. So okay. I'll share these results. Okay. Two ducks. So, yes. Big winner. Two ducks. I love it. Okay. So I'd love to hear some answers here. Let's see. For the folks who said they want to see one duck, why one duck? Do you have a reason for your one duck? And for the folks who want to see two ducks, what's your rationale for two ducks? And then for the people who want oodles of ducks, they just want to be swimming in ducks. Tell me, tell me why oodles of ducks. Sarah's got a great rationale here. Sarah. <laughs> so she's like, I'm not making a case for my answer so much as I'm making a case for not oodles of ducks. Yes, <laughs> because I don't want oodles of duck poop. Got it. Love that. And he just loves the word oodles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the word oodles too. And the, uh, and the other Andy says, two ducks are more exciting than one duck, but not as overwhelming as oodles. Okay. Mm -hmm. I live at a, a lake with ducks and too many make you nervous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't love watching ducks or other animals interact? Okay. I'd rather see ducks because they're flocking species and more than one duck means they're in an ecologically good condition. Mar Duh, with a health advisory, yes. Wow. A lone duck would be sad, lost, or having lost a mate. Oh, Martha, so emotional. So emotional, but yes. Vernon, oodles would be scary. Okay, if you're not a big fan of ducks, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Much Round one, much easier and not be afraid they'll attack. Okay. A lot of duck rationale here, really. This, this is yeah. a deep thought about ducks. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, I love this question. I normally ask it about turtles because my mom, oh, can, confetti, the ducks aren't gonna get you. You're all right. I normally ask it about turtles because my mom takes a walk every day over a bridge where underneath the bridge live oodles of turtles and they're all swimming and they're all out there and none of them are social distancing and they look like they're having an enormous pool party and it brings me much joy because I'm obsessed with animals, okay? so. 
One turtle would delight me. Two turtles would intrigue me. Oodles of turtles makes me feel like everything's going to be great. Just absolutely over the moon about these. And that's also how I would feel about ducks. So I love these answers too, because sometimes people will say one duck or one turtle means um, I can really zoom in and like pay really attention to that animal. Or two means maybe they're like on a date or they're best friends, you know? And then oodles means, you know, just like the more the merrier, okay? And one of the qualities of joy is abundance. And so if there's something that you happen to love, typically more of it is going to bring you more joy. So I'm seeing on Abby's camera that she has a lot of books, okay? So I'm assuming that Abby really likes books and yeah, she likes, yes, and she likes to keep books. And probably even though she's read the books and might not need the books again, having that many books might bring her more joy. Indeed it does. Yeah. And if you love plants, for instance, if you are a person who loves plants and, and you have a lot of house plants, instead of having them spread out everywhere in your home, consider clustering them into little clusters because seeing them together tends to actually give you more of the effects of abundance and bring you more joy, right? Abundance of kittens, yes, <laughs> and books, absolutely, yeah. So recently I was teaching this workshop and a gal um, was on screen and behind her she had like 14 mini mouse ears and I asked her and she said oh every year I go to Disney and I get mini mouse ears and I used to have them in a drawer but I didn't get to enjoy them as much so I just displayed them and now every day it makes me happy to see them together right so ways that you can infuse a little bit more abundance is to that more the merrier vibe on things that you love right? I like it. yeah oodles of ducks oodles of turtles whatever the oodles may be it's a good it's a good thought <laughs> All right, so I'm so excited that polling question worked out so great. So we've talked a little bit about um, some of the people and um, animals that bring us joy. Give us some examples specifically of who emulates joy in your life and how they do that. How that joy, you know, oozes out of them that you experience it. So I'm going to talk because I am visiting my cousins this week. I'm going to talk about my baby cousin Misha. She's six and there is almost nothing that doesn't excite her, even something so small, right? Yesterday, she was just throwing the dog, the ball for my dog for probably two hours and didn't get bored. And then would, you know, she just always wants to say, look, look, because she's so excited by throwing the same ball over and over and over again, that she's jumping up and down and wants you to experience that feeling she's experiencing too. So she, for me, and she also sees the world in a very colorful way. She just emulates joy to me. Uh, your children, especially your youngest, carefree and living in the moment, yes. Your soulmate is beyond happy to have a fresh cup of coffee every day in the morning, yes, Martha. Yeah, no, keep going back to kids because they're one of the best examples of joy, Kelsey, that's not a bad thing. Your niece and nephew give you so much joy every time you spend time with them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true for me as well about my nieces and cousins. Absolutely. And my, oh, I just got a nephew three weeks ago. I keep forgetting to say nephews now. Yeah, mm -hmm. very exciting. Yeah, these are great. Your best friend will often send text messages like, I'm grilling a pineapple and taking a moment to appreciate the scent. Oh, Julie. Yes, that's so good. That reminds me of a co-lead retreat we were at years ago where we talked about savoring the world with joyful attention. And that for me is like just the absolute like epitome of that, of that idea. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's like the stop to smell the flowers moment, right? Where you actually drink the moment in. Yes, I love that. That's, That's when we get home. Oh yeah, of course. I could be gone for five minutes and the buddy's like, hello, what'd you do? Did you bring me anything? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yes. Okay, so joy and other emotions. Let's do it. Let's talk about joy and other emotions. What other emotions might we link to joy? And what does joy have to do with? How does it relate to other emotions? When I think of joy, things that immediately come to mind for me are excitement, fun and enthusiasm, amusement, um, love, 
right? Really, really words that we associate with a lot of positive feelings, right? Celebration. Celebration. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The first things that come to mind for me when I think about other emotions and joy are just like a myriad of positive other emotions. What I find very reassuring though, is that even when we're going through a time where joy feels really harder to come by, when we're having an anxious moment or a very stressed time, or we're experiencing grief, right? That actually our ability to know, understand, and move through all of our emotions, including, including ones that we might quote unquote call negative, it actually helps us to build emotional resilience enough to feel the full effects of joy more fervently. Meaning if I ignore the hard times, the grief and the sadness and the things that I'm ex experiencing, and I kind of um, try to numb those things out, when I actually am in a moment that would bring me joy, I might feel frustratingly less than I normally would. Because the more we get familiar with kind of our whole litany of human emotion, the better we are at feeling those positive emotions to their fullest oomph, right? That biggest oomph moment. Yes, and joy can be a wellspring to bring forth other positive emotions. I love that word wellspring because I think it is so pertinent with what we're talking about here. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So joy brings out these other emotions in us. So why joy? Why am I so obsessed with joy? Well, we talked about it can bring down our stress. It can make us feel more connected to people, right? It can make, it can counteract physical effects of negative emotions or feelings. And it can actually make us more productive, right? We can be more up to 14% more productive. Positive emotions like joy also broaden our focus. We're more cognitively flexible when we've recently experienced joy. We're more open to seeing things in fluid ways and it makes us more creative or open-minded. So I used to work, sorry, can buddy any little noise in a house she doesn't know to her is like alert, somebody has moved, you know? Can buddy, honey, everything's all set. We're okay. So um, when I used to work on a campus, it was a really small campus and there was only 2000 students, but it was in enormous grounds. And there would be some meetings that it actually didn't make sense to walk to because it was too far, but I would schedule the time to walk to the meeting because I knew that walking and being outside or seeing students that I knew on my way was going to bring me joy. And I knew that I would show up to that meeting ready to do better work. Okay, so I would show up, you know, in a better state of mind, in a more creative state of mind, in a more collaborative state of mind than I would if I had jumped in the car, rushed there, you know, like, and I probably would have, you know, left one minute before I should have, because it would have gotten me there quicker, thrown my bag over my shoulder and just walked in in a hump, like, okay, I'm here, rather than like taking the time to get there actually put me in the state to do really good, important, my best work, right? So joy isn't a luxury all the time, it can feel that way. But something like a walk, that's not so luxurious. It doesn't cost us so much money, right? And we owe it to ourselves, even when we are experiencing things beyond just the pandemic, but so much unrest as a society, so many systemic issues that we have yet to conquer, right? And we have so much work to do on when we are seeing, you know, social major social needs across the nation and lots of divide. Um, it's hard when the world feels so heavy to take those moments, but we can't like gear ourselves up to do good work and to be productive in those ways if there's not moments for us that are restorative, like joy, right? And so it's not just a, a luxury to me, it's a need, you know, it's a need. And also you, now I'm like going into like my, high spirited net or doodle note, but like also you deserve it, right? So we deserve that for ourselves. So I love to talk through these different qualities and elements of joy. Um, these are actually called the aesthetics of joy and they are research done by um, uh, Ingrid Fatel Lee and she is a designer and um, she's a designer who has spent her life researching what the design elements tend to bring us joy. And it lines up with the science of just like what experiences bring us joy too. And so I love talking about this because I am an artist, right? And these things overlap in such a major way. 
So we've talked about many of these already, but I just wanna run through them so we can put um, a word to them and also um, notice them more. Because for me, I'm big into, if you know something, you'll notice it more and that's half the battle. Okay, so some of these aesthetics of joy. Um, energy is associated with vibrant color and light, right? So typically in the winter, we tend to wear darker colors and save our brighter colors for the summer. Poppycock, we should be wearing brighter colors in the winter because we don't see as much sun and we don't see as much color. So whoever told you that you can't wear bright pink in the winter is a liar. And it's time to start associating a little bit more color and putting more color into our space, right? So if there's a color you love and you're like, no, but you can only put grays in your house, that's a lie. You can have color, even if it's just flowers or something like that, right? Abundance, you can call this the too many ducks thing, right? Just things that will bring us um, joy are things in abundance that feel full, multiplicity and variety. So things, um, Ingrid Fatali's example, which is perfect for me because my dog's name is confetti, is one piece of confetti is called a confetto. One piece of confetti is just a small piece of paper. It's really not much, but a handful of confetti is a party, right? So that's how we think of abundance, the more the merrier. Freedom, this is just about being outside, being outdoors, connecting with it in whatever way feels right to us, roller skating or just sitting outside in any way that makes us feel good, right? Harmony, um, harmony is really just about uh, symmetry and uh, pattern and repetition. So, you know, um, if you really love symmetry and you like things to be lined out in that way, if you have like a pen cup on one side of your computer, consider getting a second pen cup to kind of anchor, right, your computer. So you're seeing things symmetrically all the time um, and it will just kind of in, in innately bring more joy and peace. Play, we have talked about ad infinitum, right, play. Um, animals, kiddos, but also aesthetically, we see these things in bubbles and circles and spheres. So one thing I did this summer, uh, last summer rather, when during the pandemic is I bought my kiddo neighbors across the street, giant bubbles, and I bought me bubbles. So whenever we were sitting on our front porch, we could be doing a thing together, even though we weren't doing it together. And it also brought us that feeling of play. Surprise. Surprise is one of my favorite elements of joy. And also, Frustratingly, it feels like the hardest one to create for yourself, right? Because how does one surprise oneself, right? Um, but actually, I found some ways. So one way that I do this, the end of winter, I sneak things into my coat pockets. Abby's nodding. Do you do this? That's exactly what I was just going to say. I do the same thing. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, you know, $5 for a fancy coffee or a note I wrote to myself or a seashell from a trip I took, something little. Um, and it surprises me. I also try to put something in my junk drawer so that when I am motivated to clean it, I'm like, oh, you just are the proud owner now of whatever the thing is, right? Um, transcendence certainly sounds like the bougiest one, but transcendence is really just about this feeling of lightness and elevation. So um, the easiest way to come by transcendence is just to crane your neck to the sky more. Because when you crane your neck to the sky, it opens up our bodies mm -hmm. to a more open state of receiving and talking and communicating. And it just gives us that feeling of more lightness and more elevation. In my studio, um, I painted my ceiling rainbow so that when you walk into my studio, my store, the first thing you do is crane your neck upwards, which puts you in a body posture that's more positive. And also I double dipped because bright color is energy, right? So um, go ahead and paint all of your ceilings, I say. Um, Martha is saying, finger painting or planting a mixed set of wildflower seeds. Yes, Martha, that's so true. A mixed set of wildflower seeds could bring you a major surprise. That's so true. That's a really good one. Ooh, I'm going to steal that example for my next one. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> Confetti is not as into that example. Sorry. Okay. The, the next one, honey, sweetheart, you're okay. It's just Danny. I know. It's, you don't know that noise. So sorry. Um, magic, I think, is the most elusive one because um, it feels a little heady, but really magic is just kind of like unexplained forces in the world. Mm -hmm. So let's say like 
prisms that shoot rainbow light, right? Like gives you like that really magical feeling. I'm saying that because in my cousin's house, she has a lot of prisms in her window or serendipity or the feeling of deja vu or kismet. These moments uh, like that just don't have a full explanation, but feel like, ooh, right? Like that good juju feeling. Celebration, of course, we've talked about many times and you know what that means. But you can also see celebration aesthetically in sparkle and bursting shapes, which I think is really interesting. So see the fireworks, get a sparkler, you've got celebration. And then renewal is just these trans transition times when we have change that beginning of the school year is a refresh, right? Or just getting brand new notebooks for the start of something, a refresh. These times where we feel renewal can also bring in joy. So, yeah. So those are the aesthetics and qualities of joy. So how does one bring more joy into your life? You've heard some of these examples. Do any of these, like, like Martha's examples are great. Do any, does this strike any aha moments or uh, ideas in you about how you might invite a little bit more joy into your life? Natalie, this is making me think about and talking about surprise. One thing that I do for myself to surprise myself. Well, when we were in the before times when we were going into an office is packing my lunch the night before and then getting to work. I'm like, oh, look what I packed for myself, like making something fun for yourself or mm -hmm. um, setting out clothes for yourself that you'll wear the next day. And just like doing yourself that favor, I think is totally. kind of a surprise too. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. And I, I love that I surprise is one of my favorite ones for that reason, because it just like, it's so instantaneous, that feeling of joy. Um, and because joy is a very contagious emotion, even if you're not surprising yourself, you can surprise other people in a way that ends up coming back to you like a boomerang, right? Yeah. So when people stay at my house, um, confetti, my dog, actually, she has this habit of hiding her bones in everyone's bags hmm. and they'll get home and be like, oh, I now own a bone from confetti. Yeah. And I learned that trick from confetti where I started sticking little cute things in people's bags when they were staying, you know, for the weekend. So they went home and not only did they have whatever confetti buried, but they had like a note or a candle or something that I put in there for them too, right? And then they're excited and you get that feeling back. So it's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Martha, taking a walk down the street, one hasn't walked. Yeah, fun surprises in architecture. Yes, plantings or gardens, kids playing in their yards. Absolutely. Yeah, you don't know what you're going to run into, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing that just really brings me a lot of joy is color, just so much color. And um, color is related to energy. And I take a lot of photos of public art because I just really love art so much and especially murals. And people always ask me like, so do you research murals before you visit a new town? Like where, how do you find all these? And the answer is like, sometimes I research them, but most of the time, because my eyes now are so attuned to look for the things that bring me joy, mm -hmm. I just run into murals all the time. Right. So I don't even really like research murals so much as I color jumps and grabs me from across the street. And I see it and I'm like, I wonder if that's a mural. And then I turn to some weird alley and there's an incredible mural right there, right? So there are, once you start to know the things that you connect with the most, right? Those things, you know, you keep, they keep running into you, right? Mm -hmm. keep running into you. I like that. Trails in your community. Yes, Vernon also agrees with Martha, with Martha with these good walks. Yeah, love that so much. These are great examples. Yeah, I love this. Okay. All right. Poll. Do you want me to launch our other? Poll? Yeah, let's get that poll. Let's get that poll. I know we're so, a couple minutes over our time, but hopefully folks can hang out with us a little bit longer too and talk about joy and be 14% more productive in the next hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last question, the last poll, but of the aesthetic qualities of joy, which one do you relate to the most? Which one? Do you feel like, oh yeah, like now that I think about it, that thing really like screams to me when I run into it. Mm -hmm. right? Energy, abundance, freedom, harmony, play, surprise, transcendence, or magic. Yes. We're sharing a resource, which I'm gonna love. I can tell. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and end our poll. Yeah. 
and Let's share those results. Okay, good. We love to celebrate. We love to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. And I know during, it's been a little more challenging. We've had to be a little more creative about how we celebrate, right? But um, I still think that that is a, is a time where we feel, you know, connected and culture is a big part of celebration too, right? Food and culture and all those things. So um, knowing that, right? Like how do we celebrate more small things, right? How do you invite a little smaller celebrations? Does it have to always be a birthday or, you know, a huge marker of time or can it be, something little like I passed whatever goal I set for myself and now I'm treating myself and my best friend to drinks out on town right or something like that so little ways that we can celebrate um, for me magic is a big one and surprise is a big one um, and color is a big one so hopefully knowing those things um, helps you to notice them and Vernon thank you for this murals reference because I'm always looking for one um, and hopefully uh, you take the time to notice some of these things more often and in fact color more often as we've been coloring the reason we color during this conversation is not just because it's great at helping us stay focused and using our hands but actually coloring can produce the same effects as meditation by reducing the stress on our restless mind it can um, actually trick the fear center of our brain the amygdala into slowing down and to getting into a more of a state of flow. So um, take a few minutes to color, AKA meditate when you have a chance to, and hopefully um, those little breaks during the day can, you can plug in some more of these little joyful moments during the day because you deserve it. And there's health benefits, stress relief benefits, and just overall, you know, happy, good feeling benefits. <laughs> <laughs> we could all use more of those for sure. Yeah. I love this so much. And Natalie, it feels so meta, but unexpected um, that this presentation about joy was so joyful and brought so much joy to all of our lives. So thank you all for being so active in the chat here and sharing about what brings so much joy to you. And Natalie, thank you for guiding us in that discussion about how we find joy in a time that's been so clunky and weird and scary at times and lonely at others. And now we know how to find more of those joyful moments too. And I really appreciate being able to spend this time with you and talking about that. Oh, we just did that poll question. So <laughs> Natalie, Nat KP, I just want to really want to thank you for the area of expertise that you've shared with us too. And you all will find a link here too, to natterdoodle.com if you want to check that out to see more about what Natalie does when she's not talking with us about joy. So thank you so much for your time, Natalie. I really appreciate it. Um, I did just want to share a little bit. I know we're a little bit over, but I am overjoyed that you all are sticking out with us for a little bit longer too. But um, if you're new to leadership or if you um, are just coming to us for the first time, or maybe you didn't know that we have four program offerings right now, um, and actually two extras just for fun, um, that um, we have a lot of different programs where we talk about the topic of joy for one, but um, and areas of way, other areas <laughs> and practice the things that um, give us more joy in our life and practice meditation and think about the things that really matter to us and how to work towards them. So um, here's information about that on our website if you want to learn more about leadership programs. And we are a nonprofit, so I do um, want to share this link to our our donation page with you here too. We will continue to provide these programs for free to you as we do these lunchtime conversations. But thank you all so much for joining us over your lunch hour. Um, if this is your lunchtime, thanks for sharing with us to learn more about joy and to listen to all these dogs barking. It's really been a wonderful time actually. So thank you everyone so much. As I said at the start, we have recorded this. So we'll share the recordings um, for all this week's um, virtual sessions with everyone who registered for the programs this week, and you'll see those in the coming weeks in your email. So thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you so much, friends. This was fun. Indeed.